Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 8, 2023. You are joining us for council time for the Clark County Council's agenda of council time. We begin with public comment. Is there any staff that you see ready either online or in the hearing room? Um, and before we do public comment, Chair, I would like to ask the council to amend the agenda and add one additional executive session for 15 minutes for potential litigation. And if there are no objections, consider it done. Thank you. Thank you. Staff, any public, any uh, public comment this morning? Yes, chair, I do have a caller online. Um, please state your name and go ahead with your comment. And I would remind you that that is for the agenda that you see before us now only. This is Kimberly Elbin, Kimberly Goheen Elbin, by citizen of Clark County. I'm gonna speak a little bit about the minutes of what you're passing. Um, I think on those minutes, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, Grace Mission, the um, women's care place down there where they're rehabbing and they have their children and family. I actually went down there the next day after that meeting and spoke and looked around again. I've been down there numerous times when it was vacant. And believe me, it, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, you go, you walk inside, it feels like a home. And every one of those people that spoke that day really spoke from the heart. And um, for some reason, this council is going to put a park or parkways down there. It really is not feasible. The fact is, it's so far away uh, from Daybreak Park that you're, if you're planning a whole new park, the access down there is, is, is wrong, unless you're gonna put it down from the flatlands to go in that way. But if you're going up from the south, uh, south side of it, it's the big steep long hill. Uh, shame on you guys. You know, when we, I've lived here all my life and I did definitely see the change. I was raising children, doing my thing. And, but I saw something peculiar about Clark County that of course the groves and this and that. Little did I know that there is a tyrannical government moving our innocent Northwest Clark County, Washington, USA. And we are going to stop this. This state is wicked as hell. And I wanna make Washington great again. It, uh, and that's what I'm out to do. So I, I'd like to have you people just reconsider that uh, Grace Mission. Um, you know, when people find this out that, that well, for, first of all, you could probably rezone. I know there's a way that you can do it, right? There's always a way. And uh, I know that there's a way when you guys want something moved, you're gonna find that way. I just wanna wake up the people to realize that unelected officials such as Kathleen Otto and Eric Holmes are running this, the, the county and that just can't happen anymore. It doesn't happen in free states where people actually understand freedom and their first amendment rights. I am a victim of local governments taking my freedom away. Now, isn't that what we grew up to do? You know, to help each other, help your neighbor, listen, you know, and do things like that. But you guys, you guys have the dollar sign and we know what God says. The root of all evil is the love of money. Your time you know, has concluded. But it's the love. The staff, are there others who wish to speak? No, Chair, that's all. Okay, we move to old business with approval for the minutes of March 1st. Is there a motion? I move approval of the minutes. Second? I second it. Discussion? Edits, changes, hearing none, they stand approved as drafted. New business, Kathleen Otto, the policy analyst. Thank you. 
Um, so as you know, we have that position uh, vacant right now and we've been recruiting. I do have at least three qualified candidates that I would like to move forward with the interview process. Uh, with that said, um, I, while the position reports to me, they fully support the council. So I would like to invite two counselors to join me in the interview process. And then as a, another part of the process, what we can do is when we have a finalist, I can bring them in in one-on-ones with council so that everybody has an opportunity to meet uh, the individual. So this morning I'm asking if there are two counselors that would like to be interested or would be interested in joining me in the interview process. Uh, that I was a volunteer. volunteer. I was just going to say, I elect Councillor Medvedge and <laughs> Councillor Bowerman. I think all of us would love to do this, but I, I think the two that have the most experience working with the policy analysts in the past, I think it makes sense to, to let them go through that process. So I would like to do it and I would want to reach out for your ideas if you have concerns or interests, uh, if you could individually send uh, the chair and I, what you would like to see, what background, experience, traits, whatever your thoughts are, I would really appreciate it. I, I'd be interested too. And if we could have uh, like the resumes and background information in advance and I'd be happy to shoot you some information. Good morning, council. This is Leslie Lopez. Just as a friendly reminder, if you are sending information, I would suggest sending it separately to Chair Bowerman and Councillor Medvigy. Thank you. And I will be drafting the questions as well. So uh, if you could copy me on that, we can incorporate that into the questions. So right now though, I have three counselors that are interested. It's Chair Bowerman, Councillor Medvigy, and Councillor Marshall. And how shall we resolve this? Because you need only two, correct? Yes, because with three, we'll have, if we do three, we'll have to have it open to the public. Well, if we go first come, first serve, it is uh, myself and Councillor Medvigy. Uh, there may be another better way to do it, and I'm certainly. Open to that. Well, like any committee assignment, it just takes three of the council or more to make the selection. Um, my personally, um, my preference would be to have Chair Bowerman and um, Councilor Medvedge because they've um, been on council for a while and. We didn't really get to work that long with Lindsay before she departed. So I think they have the, um, the experience of what the expectations are for that position. It's just my two cents. And something which I think is good is that probably Councilor Medvedge and I do have uh, slightly differing um, expectations of the po policy analyst. And I think that's a good thing. Because then it doesn't just go along like, you know, one uniform uh, decision process. There's some, there'll be some, there would be some real debate. And I agree with uh, both of the counselor's statements. I guess I'm happy to step down and uh, participate uh, when the opportunity arises. So I will send um, to the full council their applications or resumes and cover letters so that you see that. Also, also send the job posting so that you, because that's what they're applying to, right? That already set the criteria and the experience and background uh, that I went over with council as well. Um, and then I can also send the draft questions to everybody as well. And if there's any tweaks, you can individually email me back. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. The next is counselor reports. And I thank you counselor so much for not adding time to our agenda uh, yesterday afternoon uh, by giving counselor reports then. But so I know they've been building up and you have them now. So they are welcome. 
at this point. And by the way, I say that only because yesterday's meeting was indeed a marathon. For those of you that weren't online, you would um, appreciate what I'm saying if you had been looking at the clock. We were all uh, needing a little bit of lunch in order to <laughs> proceed for the rest of the day. It was a long day. But at any rate, are there councillor reports at this point? I think we've so, had a, a legislative steering committee. We've had a, an RTC. Um, so, what would you like to report on? So I did want to follow up on our RTC last night. Uh, and it was a very long day, uh, both personally and uh, uh, with the county. And, and it ended with uh, the RTC meeting, which went uh, fair, fairly long. Uh, but when, there was one public comment, and I did reach out <clears throat> to the commenter. I'm still waiting for a response uh, from Identity Clark County, Ron Arp. Um, the comment caught me by surprise, and I may have missed um, the transportation funding discussion up at the legislature. But uh, the bottom line up front is he advised that uh, the funding uh, for all of the interchange work that the state was providing for the 179th development, which is, you know, we need that for concurrency. It was always uh, the focal point of all discussions on how we funded that project back in 2019 when we lifted urban holding. And over the years, we had been trying to advance uh, the funding that uh, were, were, was allocated to all the work. Uh, some of the Streets are being done by the developer, uh, the roundabouts, other street alignments, the culvert, Whipple Creek work uh, were uh, very expensive and being funded from a number of sources. So Ron Arp last night said that that money won't be coming in 2025, which was the date we were expecting it. Uh, and again, we had been advocating over the years with the legislature to advance that money so we could get the engineering done. Uh, and move forward with it to keep it on track. Um, but, and I heard a date like 2035, uh, which will essentially throw a huge monkey wrench. So I'm trying to get some detail as to what he learned uh, and the detail of it. Um, but the side issue there that we really didn't get resolution of, you know, after we went through a couple of different public works directors from 2019, uh, what we heard was, and it's not because of supply issues, but just illusory money, uh, that the, the funding amounts uh, were not concrete uh, and that there was a, a significant delta uh, in the allocated or expected revenue uh, to pay for those uh, improvements to maintain concurrency. Uh, I, you know, it, the last I heard, it was in flux as to what that dollar amount was. Um, so as of right now, I don't know if there is a delta, a significant space between the funding for that overall project and what uh, from impact, fee, impact fees, advanced impact fees. We had a very complicated um, process for ensuring that all of it was funded. So together with now hearing there may be a delay in those monies from the state uh, causes me great concern because this is an important um, economic driver uh, for our county and future growth uh, in the Vista area. So um, I'm still trying to track down the detail. If anyone, any of the other counselors know some detail, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I don't know what has happened uh, with the funding at the state level. Uh, so just so council notes, I've already emailed Josh and Annika as we haven't heard that in our legislative meeting and I also emailed Ron Arp. So if I get an uh, answer or response during this council time, I'll let council know. Otherwise, I'll forward you the response when I get it. Chair, yes, sir, Bill, just, was anything stated about that at the legislative steering committee? Nothing that I heard of, and I'm I'm really I really like how they've been giving me like the basically like the cliff notes um, at the end of our meeting. So I I've been sending that routing it to council, um, but no, I did not hear anything about that. Hmm. Well, thank Chair. you. 
Yes, go Chair, ahead, Councilor Marshall. Th thanks. But I thank you, uh, Councilor, for bringing up that issue. It is really quite alarming. And I would say, say illusory money is really a good way to exp explain uh, 179th and the lifting of the urban holding from, from the beginning. Uh, but I would just say uh, we, we just approved I think about 350 new uh, plats uh, on 11th and 179th. So all of the housing is being built. It's moving forward. So uh, it's uh, it's really alarming. I did just get an email response from Josh. If Council's okay, I will uh, just read it. He says the governor's proposed transportation buzz budget does propose moving the funding out. We've asked our delegation members who are on the transportation committee, which is Rivers, Cleveland, and Wiley, to submit formal requests to keep the funding on schedule. We've been including this in our weekly reports. I don't think we talked about it on Monday, but okay. Uh, the, the latest rumor is that the legislative budget proposals won't implement these changes, but we won't know for sure until later this month. And they'll let us know if there's any um, additional information or if we have any other questions, let me know and I can email them back. Well, shall we say thank you for that update? <laughs> it's not, not a particularly good one but it is appropriate that we know that's for sure. Are there other reports from counselors? I'll go next. Um, I sent all the counselors um, the questionnaire uh, con connected to the tolling. Um, I Please, if you can spread that around to all your constituents. Um, they extended the period for commenting until April, I think, 20th. Um, it was only open initially for 30 days, but after the tolling committee met and discussed, they extended that period. Um, so um, please, please go and take that survey yourselves. That would be great. Um, <laughs> as Councilor Medvedge said, yesterday was a marathon because I went from our council meeting to RTC and then to a neighborhood association meeting until 8.30 last night. So indeed, it was a marathon. Um, it, it was great to see the neighborhood association meetings. They're, they're all starting to start back up again and communicate with one another. Um, uh, Chief Sample was at the meeting that I was at and he was talking about some of the uh, law enforcement issues that are going on, um, good and bad. So that was interesting. Um, also, it was really great to um, talk to Kathy Garber and go over the precinct changes and how that works on an annual basis. So um, very, very interesting being involved with the elections office. So that's it for me. Um. Councillor Belcott, in, with regard to the tolling, is there any sense of the committee on their opinion at this time, or is it simply we're taking a back seat and taking in information? Uh, I would think it's I think it's a mixed bag. Uh, it's it's definitely it's it's dependent on the stakeholder. For instance, um, the commissioner in Clackamas, Paul, probably not going to pronounce his last Davis. name. Yes. He's very concerned for um, his community because it would impact them in a double toll because they plan on also tolling the Clackamas area as well, the Abernathy Clackamas um, connection. So um, I asked several times what the tolls look like, what the cost is, what their net revenue looks like, and was not given a straight answer. So you can go back and see that meeting. You can see my my questions and actually um, coin 12. I'll send that out to all the council. Um, they did a, a consolidated uh, wrap up uh, of the meeting. And so you can see uh, wasn't wasn't my comments in that particular snapshot of the news story, but you can see some of the concerns 
Um, one of the other issues that came up is when they were putting together um, the questionnaire for the tolling, they didn't put it in, they didn't offer it in various different languages. So it was only offered in English and that's when it was rolled out live. Um, so everybody on that committee asked uh, basically to fix that as soon as possible because uh, that's the equitable way to make it so everybody understands what's happening and how it's going to impact the community. Um, I would say the majority, well, you, I'll, I'll find that meeting link so you can see. I would say the majority of the committee was pretty concerned um, by the tolling impacts and, and the costs and the feasibility and, and what that's going to look like. My personal opinion was they don't really have it hammered out really very well at this point. So that was my feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, and with the design just now really uh, beginning its process in uh, uh, what, what may turn out to be a proposed format, uh, that of course affects costs and affects therefore their feeling about tolling. So we'll see where this all goes. Thank you. No problem. Um, other councilor reports? Chair? Yes, go ahead, Councilor Dunn. So every week is a busy week for sure. Um, I had a, a few noteworthy occasions this previous week. One was I was able to attend the Columbian Conversations um, at the Kiggins Theater with regards to homelessness and uh, Council Marshall was there as well. It was a, a, a very, I think a very productive discussion because it it was uncomfortable, I don't know Council Marshall, he felt like that a little bit. There was some tension in the conversation and the, the, the idea that there's multiple ways to go about this and it was introducing new ideas, new ways, um, what is considered existing best practice. It was, it was a fascinating discussion. I believe you can watch it online. So I encourage everybody to do so. Um, I was also able to meet with uh, Mayor Steve Hogan from City of Camas as well as Port Commissioner Eric LeBrant, LeBrant we had some good conversations. Um, and I always ask the question whenever I meet with other electeds, how the communication is between the county and their jurisdiction. And so far I'm, I'm, I'm getting mostly positive, uh, positive reactions to that. So I appreciate that. And we did talk about Lacamas Lake and it was interesting to hear that conversation it's very similar to what we're dealing with at Vancouver Lake, which we all know the challenges there. And I also, the one, one thing that I did want to bring up from yesterday, and I brought this up a, a, a few times, and I don't know if we're working on it or if it's kind of on the back burner, but I, I just would really like to have more conversation about how we're doing citizen outreach um, and this was spurred by the comment yesterday that the Farm Bureau was never reached out to with regards to the ordinances that we passed yesterday. And those are huge projects and, I, and I, I, there should be some mechanism that we have every time we start a project to identify the key stakeholders and the people that should be sent that information and, and be involved in the process. I don't think we should be reactive. We should be proactive in working with our community and all stakeholders that are involved. So I did want to bring that up and perhaps we can continue that discussion in a different format and work on that however we need to. That's all I have today. Thank you. Are there other reports? Okay, hearing none, Kathleen, let's go to the work sessions. Okay, the first one uh, that's being requested is by DEEB, the Development and Engineering Advisory Board. They usually come before council twice a year, one to discuss their work program and then a second one to share their results and successes from the prior year. So they are requesting um, a, work, a work session on March 22nd uh, to share the 2023 work plan and, um, and just get council's feedback in have discussions on that. Any questions on that one? Chair? 
Yes, I go just ahead. have one question. Would would we have a draft of the work plan in advance? That'd be helpful. Usually they do, but we'll make sure that we get one. Thank you. Is an hour and a half uh, needed for that discussion, or can do you think it could be done in an hour? Particularly <laughs> with the advanced uh, copies of of what they're uh, going yeah, to be reporting I, on. I think you know, and the date that they're requesting, I believe, is also Board of Health. So um, I would say yes. I can cert we can certainly communicate back to them that we need to have this done in an hour. But again, it's also going to depend on counselors' interaction and communication during that that work session. The second one um, is. The 2022 annual reviews and dockets. This is for community planning and public works. They're also asking uh, for an hour and a half. There is um, a lot of work and discussions on these items. So, you know, if needed, we can carry that over to a second day, a second Wednesday. Um, but this is to review all the 2022 annual review and docket items. Um, before they go before you in a public hearing. The public hearings would be scheduled in May, June, and July of this year. And uh, they will also provide the council a summary of the Planning Commission recommendations and answer any questions prior to the hearing. Any questions on that one? All right. Will the Planning Commission also be present? <clears throat> I think they're probably invited, but they don't actually provide um, the testimony and you know, their hearings and work sessions are also online and we can send those to council as well if you would like to watch that. Yes, I, I would appreciate that because um, it is uh, better for me to see that firsthand rather than only secondhand through staff. Okay, we'll do, and I'll um, I'll get the specific dates on when they're there. So if you wanted to attend live, you can certainly do that as well. Thank you. Not hearing any other questions on that one. Okay, and the third one is the an update on the multi-year capital planning update. So this is our new capital planning that we're doing, the first one in the county. This is. While all of these requests are important, that's one I'm really excited about, though, because it is new and hopefully will provide a good strategic direction for us. Uh, so the budget office is helping to facilitate this process with IT, community planning, public works, facilities, and the finance team. Um, this is also touching all of our departments, but this is the core group that has been identifying um, our capital needs by working with all the departments, determining the financial impacts, uh, prioritizing the capital request and developing a comprehensive financial plan, which is identifying what type of revenue streams that we currently have that could pay for some of the capital items. So uh, the group would like to come before council before we have our budget supplemental work session, which is restricted to this and the jail updates. Um, and that is currently scheduled for May 3rd. Um, actually, the work session is scheduled for May 3rd. The public hearing is scheduled for May 16th. Uh, so this will just to give council an overview of the project and where we're at, um, get into some of the weeds if you'd like, and get feedback before we move into the budget process. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Policy issues. Uh, we have no policy issues uh, to discuss today. Thank you. And we Unless have council does. Chair, <laughs> Chair I, I had a policy issue. I, I could have brought this up under councilor reports. But one thing I've been thinking, and I think perhaps inspired by the uh, Colombian Forum on the Homelessness and thinking about causes and drivers, um, is I, I'm not quite sure what uh, uh, efforts are going into retention of affordable housing. And I know I've heard from a few people about uh, mobile home parks there where uh, they may have a new owner 
rents are going up often uh, it's a lower income community or an elderly community uh, and uh, in an article that was in the Colombian recently uh, cited a GAO report that indicated a uh, hundred dollar increase in rent is associated with a nine percent increase in homelessness so that's uh, I think it's a part of the puzzle is retaining what uh, affordable housing we have. Councilor Marshall, thank you for bringing that up. If I may quickly, Chair. Go ahead. Okay. I, I think this is an important conversation as well. I, I think that mobile homes and, and mobile homes in a mobile home park are a very, very special, unique situation. And the primary reason that it's affordable to them is generally speaking, they own their unit. And one of the troublesome areas is if that if that park is ever closed, then they, the, you know, the value that they have invested into their home essentially becomes zero because the vast majority of those they call them mobile, but they really aren't. Um, so this is, and I know I've been meaning to ask this question for quite some time. I remember, if, I think a few years ago, there was some conversation about passing some form of ordinance that affected these. Does anybody recall that? And I don't think it ever moved forward. I don't know if anybody recalls that at all. I don't have an answer to that question, but I think that while well, they own their units, they they rent their spaces, and it's the spaces, uh, the rent on the spaces that goes up. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a twofold problem. Um, so I would love to dig into this. I, yeah. So I'll just weigh in. There are some things that are way out of our lane and above our ability. I, I would tell you when this happened several years ago as well, I had met with uh, Paul Harris to talk about some ideas for the state uh, to address the mobile home park issue, especially for those who are mainly elderly and on fixed in incomes. Uh, there's no resolution right now. Uh, the bottom line is Washington State does not allow by constitution any form of rent control. And then, and there's some real downsides to rent control. So I'm willing to talk with any counselor that's got some ideas uh, around this as to what we could do on a local level, but um, this is not a new problem. Um, it is a challenge uh, and the state legislature has not take, really taken it on or come up uh, with any solutions, but Essentially, there's uh, it's one of those ugly consequences of capitalism, um, but rent control has some real downsides, and everyone recognizes that uh, as well. Um, so, I'm very interested in coming up with solutions, but at this point, after uh, considering and watching what doesn't happen in, at the state level, I, I don't know what, if anything. Uh, is a path that the county could take uh, to help uh, positively impact these decisions. And if you recall some, from some of the articles just a few years ago, there was literally one family uh, that had been buying um, a, a number of these parks and then jacking up the rents by 50, 80, 100 percent. Um, so this isn't a new issue. It's a, a real challenging one. I just don't know at our level if this is something um, that's within our purview. Um, so given uh, the interest of a couple of counselors in this topic, what um, do you think would be productive for the council to do? Are you suggesting a work session of some sort or um, how would you like to proceed? Well, from my point of view, we have so many issues demand, that are demanding our attention on a daily basis that what I would encourage is discussion amongst counselors one-on-one -on -one, uh, to see if there is something, if there is a way ahead 
but otherwise I wouldn't want to take up our time at this point with something that really is a, a state issue because of the rent control controversy. Gotcha. And I was asking the two uh, counselors who are more in support of this particular item and its discussion. How do you see this going forward for the council, if at all? Well, I think for myself, I would start by uh, uh, sitting down with the housing authority uh, and, and, and maybe they have some other contacts. And this isn't a u unique problem to Clark County or to Washington State, and there may be some uh, ideas or solutions uh, out there. Uh, but I, 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 I wouldn't mind spending some time just exploring that, and I can sit down with Councillor Young as well and uh, brainstorm. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that with just some support for, you know, from staff for asking questions and things like that, and then we can see what we can do. I just got to okay, just and after a discussion like that, feel free to uh, use council reports to uh, report back to council so we learn from your experience and your investigation. Thank you. Uh, and is there anything else on policy issues? Okay, we have two executive sessions at this time. Uh, it is anticipated that they will take at least 35 minutes um, and we uh, will not be reporting out for action, but uh, we will be coming back, of course, into uh, council time to, uh, to adjourn the meeting at the, at the end of the meeting. So it is now 936. Uh, how about if we, uh, by the time we get in and out of executive session, how about if we set it at 1015 that we return? Would that be satisfactory? Okay. Yes, thank 10 you. 15 it is, and council will see you back here at that time. Hello, council's extending executive session for five minutes, and we'll be returning at 1020. Thank you. The council is extending executive session for five more minutes and we will now be returning at 1025. Thank you. The council is extending executive session for another five minutes and we'll be returning at 1030. Thank you. Council is extending executive session for another five minutes and we'll be returning at 1035. Thank you. Let's see. This is Wednesday, March 8. Uh, Clark County Council has been in two executive sessions. There is no after action uh, to be taken today on either of those matters. And uh, so we are simply back in council time for the purpose of adjournment. It is 1035 and this council time meeting is adjourned.